Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and this is just going to go over a problem that I gave the class. And you know, I thought that most people did okay on it, but I still want to just go through it to make sure that I cover my bases, make sure anybody who had any problems is able to see what may have gone down. Okay, before we go in, I want to talk uh, through the nature of the problem. Okay, what you're seeing here is a little diagram of a manufacturing process. It's the one that we had spoken of. <clears throat> now, what we have here is there are little panels being loaded onto a basically a conveyor or a rail, and this rail goes through several different applications, like it's getting uh, powder coated or applying a powder coating. It's going through a spray booth. And then from there, it's going into a continuous curing oven where it comes back to the other side and gets unloaded. And that's the entire process. Now, the thing I want to focus in on is the actual continuous curing oven, you know, which is this guy up here. And this is a very common oven that you'll see in manufacturing applications. You'll even see versions of this in, say, uh, a restaurant. You know, a lot of pizza places it load the pizza into one end and uh, goes through and gets of pizza out on the other that's fully cooked. Same concept. Now the reason this was a good problem isn't just because this powder coating has to go through a curing process through the continuous curing oven. It also has to do it within a certain amount of time and that's usually called the tack time. Sometimes they're based on a cycle time which is slightly different but in either way you know you have a certain amount of time for that product to be going through the process to be actually completed so everything in that lineup has to a certain amount of time allotted to it all right and so that means that your continuous curing oven only has so much time available for it to actually meet its tack time all right so keeping that in mind when you do have a continuous curing oven and this is just the definition of it up here uh, you have usually have some reason that's going through in powder coating or some sort of epoxy or something else that is actually getting cured, going through the curing process. And what I wanted you to notice is as you go from the ambient temperature, you know, entering into the into the oven, you know, it enters in as a liquid of some kind. The cure starts, it goes to a gel, and then when it finishes the cure, it actually comes out as a solid. That's what the entire curing process is. And different epoxies have different amounts of time. That's the whole purpose of this table. I didn't expect you to read the entire table, but just to understand that each one of these uh, curves represents a different epoxy and its cure time. And you can see up here, these little arrows represents a transition point when you have actually gone into its cure, right? You've gone from being a complete liquid gel and now you've gone into the solid state. And it shows what the temperature is for each one of those. On the x-axis, you've got time. On the y-axis, you've got temperature. So if something goes through that oven, it starts off at the ambient temperature. Gradually, as it's traveling inside of this big box on a conveyor, it's getting hotter and hotter. This was in a normal oven. The difference is it's just it's moving. It's not staying stationary. And as it goes through that oven, it actually changes its state until it gets to the solid state. So that's the continuous curing oven process. So that's what I wanted you to keep in mind as we talk through this, this problem. So here's, here's the problem. All right, you've got a five meter long continuous cure oven. All right, so keep that in mind. It's five meters long from one end to the other of the continuous cure oven. And the entire oven is maintained at 180 degrees Celsius. And solar panels enter the oven on a conveyor and they enter in at plant temperature of 40 degrees. All right, so it's a warm, you know, a plant. If you've ever been in a manufacturing setting, it's not unusual for a plant to be uh, pretty hot. All right, so it enters in at, at 40 degrees C. So you had four things that you had to consider. Number one, you know, the plant uses one epoxy that reaches its gel state at 140 degrees C after seven minutes. Develop the model for curing the panel when its cure temperature, you know, that transition point is 160 degrees. So it actually reaches the gel state at seven minutes and then at some other amount of time, depending on how long that conveyor is traveling or you know, some other time, it actually reaches uh, 160 degrees when it's actually finished. That's when it's reaches its final cure. Now, 
what speed should the conveyor be set, meters per minute, in order for the curing process to be complete just before it exits. So in other words, you want it to just reach its solidification, just hit 660 degrees, and then start to leave. You don't want it staying in there much longer than that. So those are the first two problems. The second two, the next one, <coughs> C, develop a model for an epoxy, an alternative epoxy, for a different model of panel. And this one cures at 150 degrees C. Uh, using the exact same oven setting, so 180 degrees, still enter at 40 degrees, the same oven that reaches the gel state at 120 degrees, so a lower gel state in less time, five minutes. But it finally reaches its cure at 150. And again, remember the environment it's going into is 180, the environment that it's leaving, that it was normalized at, is 40. And the last question what's the new conveyor speed? require when using this new epoxy. So you got four questions. The first one, you need to come up with a model. Then you need to come up with a time that's going to achieve it at 160 degrees and use that time to set that speed based on five millimeters of travel. Then in the second question, you come up with another model based around the new epoxy and use that model to come up with a new conveyor speed. You know, again, based around the same conditions. So let's look at the four parts of this, this problem. All right. So, okay, so here's our first question. The plant can currently uses an epoxy that reaches its gel state at 140 degrees C after seven minutes. All right, so what this is, is this giving you an initial value, all right? Or excuse me, it's giving you your secondary value. Your initial value is something a little bit different. We'll go through that. So here's your environmental temperature, T sub M, your initial temperature, 40 degrees C, and your temperature at seven minutes, 140 degrees C. So those are our conditions that they gave us to work with. Here's our differential equation, Newton's law of heating and cooling. And we have to solve that. And we end up with this uh, solution of an equation. We have an initial temperature of 140 degrees. So if we apply this to that equation, we end up with a C of negative 40, and we end up with this as our uh, general solution. All right, so we've got our general solution, and this was our initial value, 40 degrees at time zero. So that's what this was, that this was our initial value. At time zero, we have 40 degrees. So now we've got a general solution Now we go through this and we apply our second point. Oh, excuse me, this is our particular solution. So now we go from a particular solution then to this to a model. So to create the model, we need it at seven minutes. And we need to come up with a, a temperature or a K value for that, that seven, based on that seven minutes. So we go ahead and apply that at seven minutes and we're going to solve for K, which is our only unknown. Then we come through and we have a K value of 0 0.179. All right, so we I didn't go through all of the solution to the differential equation, but you can see in other videos how we got there. And this was just applying that value of seven minutes into the equation and solving for K. So this is our, our K value. Now keep in mind that this is the general solution and our model is this in red this is our model right so in a model you have an input variable in this case time and the output so this is the temperature at that time so this is what i'm calling asking you for when i ask you to give me the model all right and that's going to be very specific because it's a it has to do with a lot of the problems you're going to end up solving so now we look at this second question. What speed should the conveyor move in in meters per minute in order to be cured before it exits? So we've got a model, you know, so we actually created a model for it. So the benefit of this model is we can figure out what temperature that panel is going to be at any point in time in that continuous curing oven. 
And based on how fast we want that conveyor to go, we can actually control how hot that panel is going to be when it leaves. Again, that's the benefit of, of this particular model. So here we have the model. Now we want to find out a speed. So we're going to have to figure out a point in time T based on a known temperature because we know what time that panel is going to cure or we know what, excuse me, what temperature that panel is going to cure. Now we just need to figure out what time it's going to be applied to it. So it's going to cure at 160 degrees. So now we just need to figure out what time that's going to take. And again, that's the benefit of the model. And this isn't the model. This is you starting into your net, your first solution. So it's 160 degrees and we're solving for T. So we're subtracting 180 from both sides. And then we're dividing by 140, excuse me, a negative 140. And then we have to take the natural log of both sides to get rid of that base E. And we come in at 10.87 minutes. So that's how long it has to be in there, right? Inside the continuous curing oven. If it leaves before then, it's not fully cured. And if it leaves after then, it, it runs whatever risk it takes for being heated up too much. We want to get it out of there shortly after it hits 160 degrees. So it, if it's in there for any more that, that amount of time, we're going to be in trouble. Now we've got to turn this and use this into a velocity. So we've got a time and we've got a distance. And we know that distance is the five meters that the oven uh, takes up. So if we look at this and we can take this function and we can create a graph from it, and again, that's the function, that's the point in time, we can actually see the curve of this thing heating up, what that curve is going to look like. So it's going to cure to 106 degrees in 10.87 minutes, according to our data, you know, and it's going to here to that particular time. It's going a distance of five meters. So to figure out what velocity that belt has to move at, five meters over 10.87 minutes comes out to 0.46 meters per minute. So that's the velocity it's going to have to achieve in order to come out of there completely cured. So now we've got the next two questions, another model for a different epoxy. Again, so this one actually reaches its gel state at 120 degrees in five minutes. And it also enters at the same 40 degrees and it cures at 150, so a lower temperature. And again, this is the, uh, the differential equation once we've gone through and solved it. And now we just have to apply the variables to it. So we don't have a K value. So we do have an initial value or it's going to be a secondary point. We know at five minutes, it's going to be 120 degrees. So we set this model up, or excuse me, this is what's going to get us our model. And we're going to solve for a K value. We end up with 120 minus 80 divided by a negative 140. Take the natural log of both sides. And we end up with K equals 0 0.169. All right, so now we've got a K value. All right, for, for our, what's going on with our thermal conditions. And now we have, we can create the model. So this is our model. So with the, based on this model, again, how to think about this is saying that anytime we reach a certain input, we get an output. So the solution to a differential equation is a function. And this goes to show that this was just a function. But, you know, in this particular case, it's being called a, a model. And the model has only one input and one output. You can't have two variables and really call that a model. And this is what this new model, if we were to graph it for different types of time going across the X axis, we can start to see when that epoxy is going to reach its final cure temperature. For an input, we've got an output. And this is going to 150 degrees. So what we can see, it's going to be about nine minutes, a little over nine minutes, nine point one, two minutes to reach 150 degrees. And it also has to travel the same distance of a five meters in the 180 degree oven. And it comes up to 0.55 minutes, meters per minute. All right. Hope this was helpful. Hope you understand what, you know, may have happened in your homework or, you know, if you had any issues with it. 
uh, this is Professor Cummings. Thanks for watching.